Hey dear students, welcome to this session of English. This is Ariman Chatterjee, your English educator, welcoming you to the channel which is called An Academy Class Apart. The ch the chapter that we are going to cover today is Eleanor Estes's second part of this amazing story which is called The Hundred Dresses, Part Two. So. We already know that uh, the story is about a Polish immigrant whose name is Wanda Petronsky and how the students of room number 13, especially Peggy and Maddie, they make fun of her. And then what happens is, you know, she is a very quiet girl, very tight-lipped, quiet girl who lives in a not-so-well-to-do area, which is called Boggins Heights. And, uh, you know, she quietly sits with the backbenchers. So they don't really know too much about her. They only think about her when they have to make fun of her or make fun of anybody in that matter. But what happens is that there's a drawing competition, which to everybody's surprise, Wanda wins the girls particular, you know, uh, the girls contest. All right. Jake Bagels wins the boys contest and Wanda Petronsky wins the girls contest. And she draws 100 different equally beautiful drawings of dresses and which is displayed eventually in room number 13 for all the other students to see because any one of that drawing could have won her the prize that day so but what is happening wanda is not coming to the school for the last few days and now everybody has a you know new perspective on her a new respect for her because she is such a good artist but to everybody's uh, you know dismay she is not there in the class so let's see what happens now uh, before we begin, of course, uh, let me tell you that you can use my code CAJT10 and avail a 10% discount on an Academy Plus and Iconic subscription. My name is Ariman Chatterjee. To all of those who are watching this video or watching me for the first time, I have completed my graduation from Delhi University in English Honours. And after that, I have pursued PGDM in Mass Communication. I have been teaching for the last 10 years. Now, an Academy subscriptions... There are some amazing features in an Academy Plus subscription. You get to study from the top educators of the country. They will give you enough amount of practice tests and live test series to hone your skills on your particular subjects. And there will be a detailed, uh, you know, exhaustive coverage of the syllabus. And of course, you get batch courses as well. And if you use my code, uh, you get a 10% flat discount, 18 months of, uh, you know, the subscription for which is, uh, you know, it costs about 20,000. After using my code, it reduces to 18,000 24 months of an academy plus subscription which costs 25,000 reduces to 22,500 after using my code which is ch8010 and if you're one of those students who need a personal attention then an academy iconic subscription is absolutely tailor-made for you you get to learn from the top educators of of this country on the platform of an academy but here you will get a complete one-on-one -on -one attention your uh, you know, your parents can be in connect with the mentors, with your educators to see how well you have progressed since you have taken the subscription. And all your progresses and your highlights will be tracked and monitored. Here as well, you can avail a 10% flat discount all by using my code, which is CHAT10. 18 months of iconic subscription that costs 35,000 regular after using my code reduces to 31,500. 24 months of iconic subscription course, which is for 48,000 after using my code reduces to 43,200. So let's crack it. Let's get straight to this particular story. And dear students, whoever is going to watch this, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy my content. All right. So let's start with Eleanor Estes. We already know about her amazing, you know, children's author and children's librarian wrote a number of books and all her books have some really amazing messages. If you're writing for, you know, uh, children, or people of young age, you need to have this amazing, uh, you know, um, some kind of a message, some kind of a moral. And that is what she was really prolific at in her writing. You know, she used to always leave us with a beautiful thought to think about after the story is read. So uh, she was also, uh, you know, uh, she also received the certificate of award of, for outstanding contribution to children's literature and was also nominated for Laura Ingle Wilder's award as well. So. Now, we are back to that same scenario by story uh, part 1, where we finished the drawing competition, uh, the results had been just uh, told by Miss Mason and Wanda Petronsky had won the girls competition of making the dresses and all of her uh, 100 drawings were displayed in room number 13. Now, what happens is while the students are taking a look at all her drawings, there is a, a letter which is bought from the principal's office to Miss Mason and when she reads it, 
she reads it a multiple number of times why because you know almost like as if she's not able to believe what she's reading all right so uh, after reading it a multiple number of times she orders all the students to quiet down and sit down and listen to this very very carefully so the room grows silent and miss mason read the brief note as everyone paid attention closely now what is in that note the note read as follows dear teacher my wanda will not come to your school anymore jake also now we move away to big city no more holler polack no more ask why funny name plenty of funny names in big city yours truly jean betronski now this letter although it was very brief it was very very direct in what it had to convey uh, there are a few points which it conveys first of all wanda betronski's family was moving out of that particular town and they were you know i think probably they were not liking the whole holler polack thing basically all the polish immigrants you know there there was a slang used for them as polack all right and holler means to shout so whenever the natives or the american people would see polish people they would shout hey polack so that's what holler polack is so now as they were going to a bigger city of course in big cities there are many more immigrants many more people from other country who come to work so funny names are absolutely normal you know names which are not very american in nature will be a common phenomena in those big cities so this is what jean petronski who is the father of wanda had written to miss mason all right so now the classroom was very very silent because all the students had this new uh, new found admiration for wanda and now the moment they found this new found admiration for wanda the new found respect for her art uh, and her artistic abilities they could not tell her because wanda had left the town she had left the school she was leaving the school so miss mason you know like every person who wears specs in time in time of you know any kind of a tight situation they take it off and they start you know cleaning it that's what she was doing and she spoke to the class in a very low voice she was very very serious and she wanted to you know tell something very very particular here i am sure that none of the boys and girls in room 13 would purposely and deliberately hurt anyone's feelings because his or her name happened to be a long unfamiliar one so she addresses the same point that the father was trying to make that you know maybe this might have happened but i really hope what miss mason was trying to say is that she really hopes that it wasn't done on purpose all right i prefer to think that it was said what was said was in a thoughtless manner all right so i know that all of you feel the way i do that is a very unfortunate thing to have happened unfortunate and sad both what is she referring to she is referring to wanda and jake leaving the school and i want all of you to think about it so she tells the students that think about it even if this has happened i hope that this hasn't happened on deliberation or yeah on purpose all right so now what happens is that after hearing this maddy feels really really bad because from the part one we know that uh, you know from the part one of the story we are very clear that maddy doesn't really align with peggy in terms of making fun of wanda it's more uh, you know it's more like she is just there because her friend is making fun of the other girl and she herself maddy she also just like wanda belong to a less fortunate family not a very well to do family so she could connect pretty well with wanda in terms of where she was coming from all right so usko bhi ye realize hota hai ki you know the this was not good you know she should have told what she felt in her heart about wanda to so maddy is feeling really really sick peggy on the other hand she is a little more defensive person agar wo kuch galti karti bhi hai she always backs her mistakes by some logic so as uh, you know in part 1 when she said that you know i ask uncomfortable questions to wanda but that's because she lies to me so she is not that stricken right now grief stricken right now but maddy is very very sad right now and she is feeling a sick feeling in her stomach so uh, she never liked peggy asking those questions but she never said anything also she never stood by wanda's side she never took a stand for wanda so that was what was bothering her all right and uh, she was she felt that she was covered and uh, peggy didn't consider that uh, you know she was being that mean as i've told you because she always gave some reason for her actions but maddy did and still didn't do anything about it that's why she was extremely sad so she wished she wanted maddy wanted to tell uh, wanda that she never meant to hurt her uh, but she didn't know how to do it because maybe by this time wanda's family has already left 
the doubt how would she communicate wanda will never come back to school so uh, well what happens was that uh, you know peggy also had this thought somehow that you know let's go and talk to her let's go and find her wherever she lives and uh, she glanced at maddy on the other desk and she was busy studying now uh, whether maddy felt bad or not peggy wanted to do something about it as well and uh, she wanted to find wanda petronsky maybe wanda had not moved out yet and peggy would climb the heights here heights means boggins heights where basically wanda's family used to live and tell her that she had won so this was more like a reaction to the guilt at a certain level that both wanda and uh, i'm sorry at both uh, maddy and peggy were feeling because of their actions against wanda now that wanda was not there so even peggy wanted to go and tell her that you know your your art is really good and you have won it so she wanted to uh, make wanda feel good about the prize that she had uh, you know just won and uh, she also wanted to tell her that she is a smart uh, you know and all her 100 dresses are very very beautiful so uh, when the school was dismissed peggy uh, you know as usual she is always a little defensive she asked with fake casualness uh, to go and see wanda if she had left the town or not and uh, maddy was so uh, you know happy at uh, hearing that even peggy uh, had the same idea so they took off quickly wo log jaldi se jo hai bogens heights ki taraf nikal jate hain an area with uh, that no one would like to visit on this drizzly damp and dismal november afternoon so uh, we have already uh, kind of set up an image of this bogens heights or at least the way the path that leads to bogens heights it's very very damp it's very very drizzly it's dismal basically it's giving uh, you know an effect of negativity an effect of sadness all around right so uh, peggy tried to redeem herself by saying she never made fun of her name or call her a foreigner of course that's true she never made fun of her name but she uh, made fun of her in more subtle ways right so she didn't even think that wanda knew that they were making fun of her well she thought that wanda was so dumb that she was so foolish that wanda would never even get to know that peggy and her friends were making fun of her so uh, they thought that she was too naive naive is another way of saying that you know you are not that smart so um Mary said nothing. All she wanted was to meet Wanda and apologize. So यहाँ पे हम लोगों clearly दोनों का perspective का difference दिख रहा है Mary और Peggy का. Mary is genuinely, genuinely sorry, whereas Peggy is of course feeling a certain sense of guilt, but she is not as sorry as Wanda. All right. And Mary just wanted to apologize to Wanda for everything and tell her how much the school admired her and uh, you know they wanted her to stay. All right. She and Peggy would fight anybody. who would not be nice to her now maddy had taken this uh, you know stand that ab se kuch bhi ho jaye bhai koi bhi wanda ka agar mazak udayega then maddy of course she doesn't know about peggy but she thought maybe peggy would also but maddy would definitely stand by wanda's side and be protective about her so maddy pointed out to a white house that she suspected was wanda's wisps of grass stuck up along the pathway like thin kittens so uh, this is like a, a you know a figure of speech which is being used wisps of grass right so there are these grassy patches like small tiny grassy patches which have spurted out on uh, you know on the streets like kittens so like thin kittens so it's like a simile the house and its yard looked shabby but clean and reminded maddy of wanda's faded blue dress so when they look at the house at the yard the white house and the yard they also look shabby but also clean exactly like how wanda's dress was remember the the faded blue dress that wanda used to wear uh, to school every day it was shabby that means it was not pressed or it was not ironed properly but it was always clean so this house gives the same uh, you know the same kind of feeling to maddy you know it's shabby but at the same time it's clean all right let's move ahead so they walked uh, to the front of the door and knocked bhai unhone knock kiya koi bhi nahi nikla there was no answer they went to the back door and knocked as well but there was no answer there as well it was clear that the petronsky had left so there was nobody in the house they had missed out the opportunity of meeting wanda and telling her how they now felt about her so um, they turned around and started walking back home now that they had left peggy asked what they can do now so ab jab 
you know there was no other way of you know telling wanda what they felt or at least even informing her about the prize that she had won peggy wanted to figure out ki ab kar kya sakte hain what can be done so how can we communicate these uh, you know feelings or these thoughts that we have to wanda so she uh, you know she suggests that maybe uh, it was her questions about the dresses that gave wanda the idea to make dresses again we can see that peggy has her own defense mechanism wo ye bol rahi hai ab ki you know maybe because i used to ask wanda about the dresses that is what pushed her to make these designs so again like you know she is trying to justify her wrong actions against wanda by giving some logic behind it all right so maddy hoped that this was the case maddy also hoped that this was the case so that she could feel less bad about what had happened so maddy being a good friend you know to peggy she was like ha chalo aap jo bol rahe ho i hope that was sahi hi ho because at least in that sense we have done something good to wanda right she could not sleep at night maddy could not sleep at night she thought about wanda and her house and her beautiful drawings and she was feeling sad about it you know suddenly this amazing person who was always so quiet who was always so talented you know she suddenly left the school and there were so many things that maddy wanted to talk to her about but now she cannot so she could not sleep the whole night and she was feeling really sad about the fact that wanda had left the school now she pressed her forehead tight in her hands and thought for a long time eventually she came to a conclusion so maddy came to a conclusion that night she was never going to stand by and say nothing again she realized that usse bahut badi galti hui she should have taken a stand for wanda when everybody else was being mean to her and she decides that from now on she will never stand by and you know be quiet if somebody is being wronged all right whenever she would see someone making fun of someone based on their appearance or name she would speak up even if it was uh, you know even if it it meant that you know her friendship with peggy could suffer because of it she could not make things right with wanda but she would not let anyone else feel that way again so this wanda's leaving had a very very uh, you know pronounced effect on maddy's life she thought about it a lot and then eventually she realized ki nahi mujhe bahut badi galti hui hai especially in the case of wanda now that wanda is not there i will make sure that this never happens to anybody else and she ensured that she will take a stand even if it meant that her and peggy's friendship might get broken or in trouble she would still take the stand so on saturday on the coming saturday maddy and uh, peggy spend the afternoon together writing a friendly letter to wanda now the next saturday what happened was peggy and maddy they spend um, the afternoon together and they wrote a very very friendly in a friendly tone they wrote a letter to wanda and uh, telling her that she had won the contest they asked her about her new school also bhai unhone uske naye school ke bare mein jahan pe wo big city mein gaye hain wahan pe wo kaisa school hai kaise teachers hain in sab cheezon ke bare mein bhi pucha and they also like whether she liked where she was living or not they intended to write an apology as well but it came into a kind of letter that you write to a good friend so they wanted to you know put an apology note also but then eventually it turned out to be a very friendly letter and you don't really you know apologize to your friend you can say it in the other way but uh, you know not a professional apology right so they mailed the letter to bogens heights writing please forward on the envelope now un logo ko to bogens heights hi pata tha they did not know where the new address of wanda was so what they did was they uh, mailed the letter to bogens heights and they wrote please forward to the new address because they did not know any address so many days passed and there was absolutely no reply and uh, there was no letter that came back so they were contemplating maybe wanda received the letter and was too angry uh, and hurt at them to write back but unko pata nahi bhai wo aise soch rahe they are thinking about it you know maybe wanda has received the letter but she is not writing back because she is very very angry at the actions of peggy and maddy maybe we don't know this is all contemplation weeks went by and there was no answer peggy had almost forgot, forgotten about the whole thing while maddy put herself to sleep by imagining speeches where she defends wanda from great crowds of girls who are making fun of her now peggy as usual we know that peggy is a little thick skinned compared to maddy उसको इतना इफेक्ट हुआ भी नहीं था और उसने अपने भर का जो वो कर सकती थी वॉट एवर वॉज एबल यू नो वॉट एवर शी वॉज एबल टू डू टू रेक्टिफाई हर रॉन्ग डूइंग शी थॉट दैट शी हेड डन इट बट मैडी मैडी वॉज प्रोफाउंडली इफेक्टेड बाय दिस होल इंसिडेंट एंड एवरी नाइट शी वुड यू नो स्लीप 
बाय थिंकिंग अबाउट सिचुएशन यहाँ पे वॉन्डा जो है वो फंसी हुई है और उसका कोई चढ़ा रहा है एंड मैडी इज गोइंग एंड प्रोटेक्टिंग हर सो दैट वॉज अ वेरी वेरी प्रोफाउंड इफेक्ट वॉट एट हैपन विद मैडी राइट सो वेन दे वुड आस्क अबाउट हर ड्रेसेज मैडी वुड येल स्टॉप एंड मेक एवरी वन अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वॉन्डा फेड सो एट नाइट शी वुड रिक्रिएट दीज सिनेरियोज इन हर हेड वेर इन वॉन्डा इज देयर एंड यू नो देर आर अदर गर्ल्स वो कमिंग टू मेक फन ऑफ हर एंड मैडी इज स्टॉपिंग so she is basically playing out what she actually wanted to do in real life but she could not do because of peggy's friendship right so yahan pe and of course the scare of being targeted next dono hi problem thi maddy ke sath because she was also not from a very well to do family and she also used to wear clothes which were given to her right which were given down to her so because of that so she was always recreating these situations in her head and trying to be the hero there so Now it was Christmas times and uh, there were bells and a small tree was decorated in the classroom. On the last day of the school before the holidays, the teacher showed the class a letter she had received. Miss Mason को एक letter आया था उस सुबह. She received a letter from Wanda, but none other than Wanda had written the letter. And now that she, uh, you know, has found she, uh, now Miss Mason knows where Wanda lives. Why? Because the letter has the sender's address as well, right? So Miss Wanda had finally, uh, Miss uh, Mason had finally got to know where Wanda was living now. So Miss Mason said that she would send her a medal, the pending medal that Wanda was supposed to receive for her prize for the dress, for the dress uh, drawing, for the drawing of the dress. Now Miss Mason said that, "Chalo, ab mere ko uska dress pata hai. I will mail the medal to her." So the class, the moment they got to know that Wanda had written this particular letter, they were very, very curious and enthusiastic, and they showed a lot of interest as to what was in that letter. Let's see what was in that letter. So the letter was written to Mrs. Uh, to Miss Mason, the class teacher of uh, room number thirteen, and it said, "Dear Miss Mason, how are you and room thirteen?" So she asks not only how is Miss Mason, but also how are the classmates. Please tell the girls. they can keep my 100 dresses because in my new house i have a 100 new ones all lined up in my closet i'd like that girl peggy to have a drawing of the green dress with the red trimming and her friend maddy to have the blue one for christmas so not only she uh, you know uh, tells miss mason that she would like the girls to have all the 100 dresses drawing that she had uh, you know designed but she also specified that uh, that particular green dress with the red trimming she would want peggy to have and the blue one she would want maddy to have so i miss that school my new teacher doesn't equalize with you merry christmas to you and everybody yours truly wanda petronsky so it was a short and sweet letter and it just showed how what a good heart uh, you know wanda had because she not only thought about miss mason but also about all the other students in the class she uh, you know inquired about how they are and specifically uh, told miss mason to give those two dresses that she had designed to peggy and mary all right so uh, on the way from home uh, you know on the way from school maggie mary and peggy held their drawings very very carefully to un logo ne wo dono drawings le liye the jin particular dresses ke bare mein wanda had told miss mason to give it to mary and peggy and all the houses now of course it's christmas time so they are just walking back home and they can see everywhere there is a lot of decoration right there is a lot of uh, you know beautiful decoration going on all the houses had wreaths and holly in the windows the shops stacked on christmas trees and the windows uh, cornucopias they are like horn shaped uh, you know uh, basically uh, they are horn shaped beautiful uh, ornaments you can see it right here right so um, of shiny papers were strung now the air smelled like christmas and light reflected off the snow onto different colors so of course it was winter time there was a lot of snow and there was a there was a feeling of joy there was a feeling of festivity in the air right and the sunlight was scattering from the snow that's what is being shown here peggy was relieved that wanda replied and showed that she really likes them by giving them the drawings and writing back so now peggy realize that chalo at least wanda thought of them both maddy and peggy and uh, it was a great gesture uh, from wanda to make sure that they were you know those two dresses that she had made was specifically given to maddy and peggy maddy agreed of course sadly knowing that she will 
never be able to meet Wanda again and properly make things right. Peggy was all right with this situation, but Maddie still grieved about the fact that you know whatever was there in her heart, the baggage that she had, the things that she wanted to clarify, she will not be able to clarify with Wanda because she won't be able to meet her, right? All right. So Maddie went home and pinned her drawing over a torn spot in the pink flowered wallpaper in her room. As we know that Maddie also is from a, a you know underprivileged house. वो भी इतनी rich या इतनी well to do family से नहीं है. So she went and uh, she stuck that particular drawing at a spot where the the wallpaper had come off. Right. So the shabby room came alive with the vibrant drawing. As we know, her room is also shabby because she is also not very well to do. She doesn't have all the you know top class things in a house. But that small piece of drawing, the moment that she uh, stuck that piece of drawing into her wall, it just made the room come to life, right? And uh, she sat on the bed and looked at it. She remembered how she stood by and did nothing. Every time that Maddie uh, you know glanced at that particular drawing of of the dress that she was given. she always uh, you know she was always taken back she was always teleported to the times that wanda was being made fun of and she maddy did not do anything and she kept feeling bad we know that uh, the guilt of maddy is much much bigger than that of peggy right she is constantly feeling bad she is constantly imagining scenarios where she is protecting wanda so the the effect of wanda leaving has it was much greater on maddy compared to peggy now uh she remembered how she stood by and did nothing and wanda was still nice to her and in spite of all of these things wanda was a gem of a person to both peggy and mary so thinking about this she started crying tears rolled down her eyes as she looked at the picture then hastily rubbed her eyes and looked closely now wo is bare mein soch rahi thi aur wo you know mary had started uh, crying and as she was looking at the dress she realized something and that is why she suddenly uh you know rubbed her eyes let's see what did she realize she hadn't noticed the face and the head of the drawing so that particular dress the drawing of the dress also had faces drawn on them right so it looked exactly like maddy now she realized that that particular dress that blue dress the drawing of the blue dress the face that was drawn on that particular drawing was exactly that of maddy so now we even get to know that wanda was so so you know caring and so thoughtful and so mindful that uh, she didn't just randomly give a piece of drawing to maddy she gave the drawing to maddy which had her face on it and all this while you know they had missed out on observing that they had not observed the face and the moment maddy although you know she was crying and looking at the dress but once she realized that the dress uh the the design that the drawing that you know it's there on her wall the face is exactly that of maddy she was so excited she realized that you know wanda actually really cared about them wanda actually cared about maddy and peggy so she excitedly ran over to peggy's to show her wanda's uh, why wanda chose to give those drawings to them so then she realized that maybe the one that uh, the, the drawing that uh, wanda had given to peggy that might also have peggy's face on it so she was very excited she quickly went to peggy's house and uh, uh, you know showed her and told her that you know just go and check maybe it's your face when peggy saw that she realized yes it was her face so they both were extremely elated to find that she had drawn both of them in the dresses that she drew so the dresses that wanda uh, you know wanted uh, miss mason to give to peggy and maddy they were not just some random dresses they were actually designed with their faces on them so peggy then said that she must have actually liked the two of them and maddy agreed then you know peggy realized that maybe you know this girl wanda she actually liked us she actually liked us because nobody would go to you know that amount of effort to draw your face perfectly with the dress that that particular person is giving you unless that person has some kind of a fondness towards you and of course maddy agreed so knowing this maddy blinked away her tears uh, maddy was very very emotional and it is obvious because she realized that it wasn't that you know wanda didn't care about them or was feeling angry about their behavior wanda in fact actually liked them and they drew uh, she drew both of their faces on the particular drawings that uh, she meant to give to them all right 
So, knowing this, Maddie blinked away her tears that came whenever she thought of Wanda standing on that sunny spot in school, looking stolidly at the group of laughing girls as she walked away saying, sure, a hundred of them all lined up. So that's where this particular story ends. We get to know that Wanda was a girl with a golden heart. She never cared about, uh, you know, the amount of fun. She, of course, understood, which Peggy and uh, Maddie didn't realize, that she actually understood that she was being made fun of. But she actually was fond of them and she drew the faces on those particular dress designs that she, uh, you know, had meant to give to Maddie and Peggy. So it just shows that what an amazing human being Wanda was. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, after realizing this, Maddie, of course, we know that she had profoundly been affected by the loss of Wanda's presence in the school. But I'm pretty sure that after, after this incident, after Peggy knowing that her face was also there on the dress that she was given, her perspective on life must have also shifted and she would have started behaving better with other people. So that brings us to the end of this amazing story. I think that we have, uh, 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 you know, a kind of something very valuable to learn from this story. I feel that we should always be kind to people. We should always be kind to people irrespective of where they are from or what their financial backing is or, you know, we should just be kind to people. Be kind to people in general and life will be much, much better. So that brings us to the end of this particular, um, you know, explanation. I hope that it was helpful and meaningful to all of you. This is me, Ariman Chatterjee. I will see you very soon with another explanation very soon. Till then, take care and bye-bye.